This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We are glad that you have tuned in to our live broadcast on today. We hope and pray that you will experience God in some kind of way through our services. We ask that you will like, comment, and share our services, and that you will most of all come back and see us again. You can connect with us on www.mounthorpdesoto.org. Tell your friends, tell everybody that God is good and he's worthy to be praised. Enjoy. Amen. Why don't we all say amen? Let's say amen again. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to our Tuesday night insight. Uh, it's once again an honor and a pleasure uh, to be able to gather into the house of the Lord one more time. Amen, amen, amen. And we don't waste a lot of time. On Tuesday nights, uh, we'll have a quick devotion and then we'll jump right into our lesson uh, for tonight. And so for our scripture reading, I know Deacon Gibson is here and he's ready. Matter of fact, come on, Deacon. I, I don't want you to be ready. Your readiness to be in vain. Amen. Come on. And I'll be in the third chapter of Proverbs. All right. It says, my son, do not forget my law, mm. but let your heart keep my commands. Yeah. For length of days and long life and peace, they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Mm. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Well, and it says, and so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Verse 5 says, trust in the Lord yes. with all your heart and lean not on, not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he shall direct your path. Oh, yeah. Amen. I'll stop there. Shall we pray? Eternal God, our Father, we come once again. Thank you, Lord, for allowing us to see this dawning of a new day, Lord. Thank we you. thank you for last night's lying down mm -hmm. and early rising this morning. Lord, we ask that you would be in the midst of us as we ready ourselves to study your most holy word. We just ask you to have your way in and through each of our lives. We thank you for the pastors that you've blessed us with, our executive pastor. Thank you for him and his legacy, Lord. We thank you for oh, yeah. this man Horeb church, Lord. Thank we you. pray, Lord, that you will take us to higher heights as we move from being religious to becoming righteous. We just ask you, Lord, to have your way. It's in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon Gibson, uh, for our devotion on tonight. Uh, I just want to take time to read our scripture text uh, for our executive pastor on tonight. Uh, he will be coming from uh, the book of beginnings, Genesis, uh, chapter 22. Genesis chapter 22, as we are continuing our thrust on family relationships. And we'll be talking from Genesis uh, chapter 22 and verse number six will be our scripture text for the night. So if you have it, say amen. amen. And will you stand for the reading of God's word? Uh, Genesis chapter two and verse number six. And it says, and Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son and he took the fire in his hand and a knife and they went both of them together and may the Lord add a blessing to the readers hearers and doers of his holy word now without any further ado my brothers and sisters I present to some and introduce to others 
the man, the myth, the legend, the nationally known living legend, uh, the president of everything, amen, our honored and esteemed executive pastor, Dr. S.C. Nash Sr., as he comes with our lesson for the night. Receive Dr. Nash. Thank you much, Pastor Chuck. Yeah. And I'll say good evening to, good evening. to you. The Lord has been good to us. We thank God for his goodness. The verse of scripture that my son read serves as our text. Genesis chapter 22, uh -huh. verse 6. All right. And I want to put emphasis on the father's responsibilities. talked a lot about mothers and yeah. their responsibilities. Yes, and we've used scripture to show that the Lord has much in store for mothers even today. Oh, yes, yes, Thank you. But I'm pleased that Throughout the scriptures, there are plenty of scriptures that have to do with fathers. All right, all right. And this one tonight has to do with Fathers. All right, let's see, let's see. It's a passage that deals with Abram and his first son, at least first in that he was the promised son because we know that Ishmael came before Isaac but the story of Abraham is a striking story. All right. yes. Yes. He spent a lot of time with his son Isaac uh -huh. because he was the first according to promise. In reality, 
Isaac was the answer to a prayer. Long years Abraham had waited yeah. on God, You're believing right. Right. Yeah. Right. that he would keep his promise. Yes. Yeah. And when Isaac came, grew up between his mother, brothers, and father, His became a striking story. All right. mm -hmm. Reflecting understanding mm -hmm. and comradeship between this father and this son. All right. Time for God to test Abraham mm -hmm. was upon us. So Abraham, one morning, went to a very lonely spot right. on Mount Moriah. Yeah. Shared with his son that he had to go. Yeah, yeah, tell the story. Yeah, sure. Isaac, as usual traveled with his father well. to that lonely place. Abraham didn't, Abraham didn't give him much detail as to what he was doing. He just started binding the boy up, the ropes, and had a knife in hand. Yeah. But so perfectly was Isaac confident in his father. He right. didn't You're right. You're right. raise any questions. No, didn't. All he knows is that the father would offer and Prospect. Well. He didn't know that he was the prospect. And Abraham lifts the knife, preparing to slay the boy. 
And God says to Abraham, that's enough. Stay your hand. It doesn't take much imagination to sense that the son was quite delighted. Can you imagine the rejoicing of that father and son? It's a great moment when Isaac sees that his faith in his father had been vindicated well. and the father's faith in God had been rewarded. Abraham was 100 years old at that time. He was an old man. And Isaac is now still very young. Abraham was stricken in years. But there's still a beautiful relationship between the old and the young. Perfect trust. Perfect comradeship. Perfect fellowship. Perfect faith. We see a whole lot about mothers and motherhood and all too little is being said about fathers and sons. And God bless mother. God bless motherhood. But sometimes we forget that the Father's love is as deep as the mother's. It's been said and commonly accepted that a man does not and cannot love as deeply as a woman. But psychologists tell us that man's love is even deeper. His children are bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And something in that truth uh -huh. ties him to his children. Yeah. Even though the mother gives birth mm -hmm. to the child, the father gives life. He's a part of that life. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The necessity of providing for his household takes the father away from home and the family. Unlike families today, The 
fathers often deprived of the fellowship of the family. Some of the particulars the man does not have. The prattles of the family, the toddling about. Often puts the man out of the home. The necessity of providing for his household takes the father away from home and the family. He's deprived of fellowship and of many things. The toddling about of a baby. Seeing him do the things that they do. But that doesn't mean that a father's heart is not yonder in round and about the home. Yeah. Just means that His job and we even know that that's not so today because the woman has her work yeah. but back in the day in the Bible day. Yeah. Yes, sir. It was somewhat different. Mm -hmm. The father is out to provide for his family. All right. All right. And the provisions takes him farther away from home and the family. Yeah. He, he deprived of fellowship and of many things. But that doesn't mean that father's heart is someplace else. Right. while he's in the battle for life, the struggles to support the family. There isn't a true father who wouldn't take the shirt off his back for his child. make any other sacrifice. Right, right, right. Father's sacrifice far more than we realize. He has a way of loving more deeply than we give him credit for. So I want to say some things that are quite disturbing. But true. Right. 
in this passage, God expresses his relationship to this father and son. Like as a father pitieth his children, so the Lord pitieth them that fear him. And when you watch Abram and Isaac, you find that The father exemplifies the kind of relationship much similar to what God the Father is to his saints. There are plenty of scriptures that are referenced that need to be applied today. We look at Abraham and Isaac. And they picture the redeemed of all ages as a family gathered from distant climates for great reunion. Coming from all nations and kindreds and people And the scriptures say they shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob while God spreads the feast and the marriage of the elder brother takes place. Yes. It is grand to be a Christian it's wonderful to be a child of God. It's wonderful to think about that time when the whole family were gathered together, not as strangers, but as one big family to live with God the Father forever. And we see in this this passage what God the Father is to his children. And we ought to take to heart the fact that God the Father has interests. God the Father 
expresses love. Yeah. And it's easy to see that God the Father is exemplified by this father Abraham and his son Isaac. Wow. I'm not sure what the, the people who are working have written down, but, but it's apparent Abraham becomes an example of man as the head of the family. God meant that men should be the head of the family. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Amen. Sometimes we do a lot of foolish jesting yeah. about it. Someone will say, yes, the man is the head, but the wife is the neck. And the neck turns the head. But no such foolish jesting need be done tonight. I some, know some people dislike that. <laughs> but we learn that you can't beat yeah. God's plan uh, for a happy yeah. life, yes. a happy home, uh, virtuous. Christian life or blessed life anywhere. Yeah, yeah. Yes, we can't improve on God's plan. Mm -hmm. Instead of trying to have their own way and formulate their own plans, if men and nations would realize that God is all wise, that the best thing the human race could possibly do would be what God says. One day they'll do it. One day the earth shall be full of knowledge and knowledge of the Lord and yeah. the waters cover the sea and she shall not lift up sword against nation. Neither shall they learn war anymore. There will be peace among nations and happy families in the world. All the Old Testament prophets were men. But 
they shall sit every man under his vine, under his fig tree, and none shall make them afraid. The wolf also should dwell with the lamb and the leopards lie down with the kid and the calf and the young lion. And a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall feed their young ones shall lie down together the lion shall eat straw like an ox the suckling child shall play on the whole of the ass the wean child shall put on the cockatrice den. That's what Micah tells. Micah four and four. Isaiah 11 and 6. Yes, sir. When will man understand when, when. that God's will is best? Ah, I like it. His plan yes. for anything cannot be improved. God meant the man to be the head of the family. Yeah. Genesis 3 and 16 proves, for unto the woman he said, and thy desire shall be to thy husband, he shall rule thee, not as a tyrant, not as a despot, not as a cruel monster, but man should have absolute authority in his home. And his words in that home should be law. They say it again. Huh? <laughs> Absolute authority yes. in his home and his words oh. in that home yes. should be law. law. Of course, God also meant him to be God honoring and God fearing. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. You should exercise that authority in the fear of God. Right, 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 right. And must be a benevolent ruler. That's God's plan for a happy home. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 3 and verse 8 tells us the head of the woman is the man. For the man is not of the woman but the woman of the man. Right. Then Ephesians 5 and 22 and 23 said, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. 
For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. The Holy Spirit spoke those words and God had a purpose in mind. Right, right. You're right. No home will ever be happy. Will it be what God intended it should be until man makes that responsibility and exercises it in the fear of the Lord. Right, right, right. No wife, no mother can make a home what it should be until she recognizes and respects the authority and teaches that respect to her children. Yes, sir. And then man is a father. God meant that a man should rule his house. In the 18th chapter, Genesis, verse 19, it said, I know him, that he will command his children and his household after him and they shall keep the way of the Lord. Yes, sir. That's God speaking of Abraham. You're right. You're right. Speaking of the qualifications of a preacher, God said in 1 Timothy 3 and 2, a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to hospitality, apt to teach. The greatest need today in our world to have respect in the home. Yeah. Respect for authority well. and for men who feel the responsibility to assume and exercise that authority. All right. All right. The core principle of all civilization and society is respect for authority. Yeah, you're right. And your children will grow up as rebels against all constituted authority. We need in America today respect for constituted authority. The reason most of our criminals are under 21 is that authority in the home is broken down. Thank God for my gray haired father who was alive for a while and here.
when he said do or don't do, nobody asked why. The fact that he said it was sufficient. And he didn't have to say it twice. Was he a tyrant? No, he wasn't a tyrant. He was the best pal his boy had ever had. No man ever loved his home more. But our Father's word was law. Not one time have I referred to my dad as the old man. He was my father. My pal. It's a sad day when a boy's life is lived in such a way as to refer to his father as old man. But it's a sadder day for the father. For it is a sign that he hasn't filled the place of responsibility that God meant for him to fill in the lad's life. God meant that fathers should take the responsibility of discipline in the home and do it in such a way as to make it a Christian home. That's right. So thank God for fathers. Yeah, yeah. As a man, he's the priest of the home. God ordained that man should be a religious head of his family. The priest of his household, the religious leader, the religious head of the family. Father ought to lead in religious matters. It's his place to set the example. My son quoted me Sunday as saying that I ought to be the first right. to make for reconciliation yes. Yes. in my family. Because it's in the family that is his place to set the example. Right, right, right. Take the responsibility, not, not alone, when the father dodges his religious obligations to his home and family, he's a dialect. Direct in his duty and in living in disobedience to the plain command. All right. 
God has placed this responsibility upon the Father. Yes. But many of us have the courage to take that responsibility sometime. And you leave it to the wife other times. A man ought to be the priest, the religious head of his family. Yeah. Yeah. I read in the Old Testament, it was the father who offered the sacrifice. It was the father who killed the Passover. The father who was commanded to teach the word of God to his children. Yeah, yeah. In Deuteronomy chapter 6, you find these words Thou shalt teach. these commands to thy children and they shall talk of them when thou sittest in thine house and when thou walkest in the way and when thou liest down and when thou risest up and thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thine hand they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes. And thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house uh -huh. and on thy gate. Yes. Again, that's Deuteronomy 6. Verses 6 to 9. Yeah. In the 30th chapter of Numbers, God says that if the wife make a vow and the husband knows about it and does not disallow it but holds his peace, she must keep that vow. But if it's a foolish vow, her iniquity will be upon her husband. God said the same thing about a child who makes a foolish vow. And the father hears it, does not immediately disallow the vow. The evil consequences would be upon the father. God places the sole responsibility in matters of religion upon the man for his household. Yes. Wow. That's Bible. Yeah, that's Bible. The question is, Do you want to be Bible or not? That's the question, Reverend. Yes, sir. In offering Isaac, Abraham took the sole responsibility of the act. Yeah. Yeah. He didn't ask Sarah. If she was willing, he realized his responsibility as a father right. yeah. under the law and took the whole responsibility. 
without getting anybody's consent. God gave it to him. And he was exercising his proper authority. Yeah. Assuming the proper responsibility. Yeah. But then look again and note that God ordained that God's ordained leader is prevalent in his kingdom work. We look around and note that these are strange times. But they're not times when men are dismissed from the responsibility of being the head. The leading responsibility in the work for the church and the kingdom of God still exists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God didn't mean that the working force of the church would have a woman. <laughs> I didn't hear no amen. <laughs> God bless the woman. Yes. But something is wrong in that we're doing everything but God's thing. Don't mean no harm. God didn't mean that the working forces of the church would have to be the woman. God bless the woman. And I'm not now throwing off on you, but simply showing how men have shirked the responsibility until you women have had to step in and take over and see the work. God meant that men should take the responsibility. The first great prophet was a man named Enoch, first great preacher of righteousness, was a man named Noah. The first great lawgiver was a man named Moses. All the judges of Israel except one were men. And Deborah apologized for having to take the place of a man. She tried to get a man to take it, but he wouldn't. So she said, I go with you, but the honor of this victory shall not go to you, but reproach that a woman has to lead it. I didn't think I'd get many amens. 
All the Old Testament prophets yeah. were men. Jesus told, chose 12 to teach and to train them for yes, the work of the kingdom. And we find not a single woman in the group. Every New Testament preacher mentioned in the Bible was a man. The only other office in the church mentioned in the scripture is that of deacon. These were men full of the Holy Ghost and faith, men of good report, tested and proved as loyal men of God. Yes, Not sir. one of the books of the Bible was written by a woman. This is abundant evidence yes. that God intended that men should take the lead and carry the main responsibility in religious yes. work. Yes. The fact that we have to depend almost entirely upon women to carry and assume places of leadership that God intended for men is a reproach and a shame upon men of our generation. We've come up with a lot of examples. But you can't do away with the Word of God. The Scripture says Enoch walked with God 300 years. Most people fail to see something in that scripture. That the day of his firstborn was, first son was born, Enoch became a different man. He thought of life differently. Everything was more serious. That day, Father Enoch made a new dedication of himself to God and began to walk with God. Yes. If you haven't done that, I'm talking about walking with God. Well, yeah. Then you've deprived yourself And you deprive your boy of the greatest thing you could have given him, a real Christian father. Every child entitled to a Christian home, and the wife can make it, but she can't do it by herself. feel sorry for a lot of you women who are trying to carry the responsibility alone yes. without the help of the Father. A real Christian home in that regard is impossible. Right. I read the story of an unsaved lawyer who told when the turning point came in his life. One morning, he was started out to his office and he had crossed the street to catch the streetcar. The snow was deep. He was taking long steps to avoid stepping 
in the snow more necessary. When he looked back, he saw his three-year-old boy doing his best to step in his tracks in the snow. Son, what are you doing? He asked. Just stepping in daddy's tracks was the boy's answer. The father said he realized then that the boy was not only stepping in his tracks, but he was literally following his way. Every boy makes a hero out of his father. The question is, are you leading him to heaven or to hell? When you read in our scripture text that Abraham and Isaac went together. It says they went both together. God gives us men who are willing to lead the way to God. Joshua took the responsibility for his family and his wife. His children and his servants saying, as for me, and my house, we will serve the Lord. My father didn't ask us if we were going to church or going to attend Sunday school. No, he settled that for us. He didn't ask if we were going to church. When Sunday morning came, it was children Get ready. I've heard men say, when I was a child, they made me go to church. Now I can do at least as I please. I am not going to church. And that statement it's not your credit. It's that troubling statement. Yeah. Because I was a child. They made me go. What's that you ever saying? Drug you. Ain't nothing wrong with being drugged to church. It's, it's part of my upbringing. He kept Bailey he used to tell, tell of a woman who was active. She was forever going to church. And her husband was very troubled by it. So he told the woman, just don't go to church. And she didn't go. And 
One Sunday passed. She was still at home. Another Sunday passed. He was still at home. The father, the husband, became disturbed. He said, why are you not going down there to hear that preacher? And she told him, my pastor said, if you don't want me to go to church, I shouldn't come. And from that day on, she went to church because he had enough for being at home. challenge is for us. I don't care what it takes. We've got to come back to this book and do every word that it says. You might have to do a lot of changing, but we ought to find ourselves doing the Word of God. It may be strange. But let's do the Bible. Let's follow God's will. That seems to be the challenge. And fathers, God's counting on you. Come on, son. I want to thank all of you for your birthday gifts to me. Thank you so very much. Why don't we all say amen? amen. Say amen again. Amen. Now let's give Dr. Nash another big round of applause. <laughs> amen. For, uh, for the challenge that he has uh, set forth to us men. And it's actually piggy piggybacking on what we talked about Sunday. Was that uh, we need our men to step up and be the men that God has called us to be. Uh, the Bible says to whom much is given, much is required. And so in that while we're given the uh, leadership uh, role of our families, it is also a lot of other things that are required of us in order to be the men that God would have us to be. So God bless you, Dr. Nash. Thank you so much uh, for allowing the Lord to use you 
on this evening to help us out uh, in our family relationships. Now, he did give a disclaimer before he started. Amen. That uh, he was going to issue some challenging things on tonight. And I don't know about you, but that's what I love about my father. He's never been scurred. Uh, he's never been collywobbled to say what God has given him uh, to say to us. And so I'm thankful for him and his tutelage. Uh, and I'm just happy that uh, he's a part of the Mount Horeb DeSoto Missionary Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. God bless you. With that being said, the doors of the church are open. Uh, just maybe someone here or someone online uh, who does not know our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ through the pardoning of your sins. Uh, this is a wonderful opportunity uh, to invite the Lord into your life, even on a Tuesday night. So with that being said, uh, if this your, if that's you that I'm referring to, you uh, make your way down or you can just come in on our live feed and we'll be happy to uh, meet your request because that's what it's, this is what it's all about, uh, introducing that unsaved man, woman, boy or girl to the God of our salvation through the life and acceptance of Jesus Christ. Is there one or are there any? Amen. Bless you. Bless you, deacons. Thank you so much. Uh, as we are, <clears throat> uh, our deacons are going to receive our offering here inside of the sanctuary. Those of you who are joining us on our live feed uh, especially our members, uh, our members, we are looking for uh, your gifts on tonight. And those of you who have um, joined us and in, in vi by visiting with us, uh, if you want to be a blessing and partner with Mount Horeb in a financial way, uh, the giving avenues are on the comment section. Please feel free. Uh, to be a blessing, and uh, we'll pray God's blessing on you. Also, while we're giving, let me let me remind you, uh, we are still uh, receiving monies, uh, gifts, birthday gifts for our executive pastor. And so, if you want to uh, be a blessing to him, you can either send it to the church, or they will have. Uh, his cash app and Zelle information uh, online so that you can, um, if he's been a blessing to you, you can be a blessing to him. Amen. 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 Uh, with that being said, uh, we want to remember Sunday. Uh, we're coming Sunday, 11 o'clock, and uh, we're going to look forward uh, to have a grand time in the Lord on Sunday. And so, uh, we're praying that yeah, all of our members will be here uh, on Sunday. Also, I finally found Sister Branch and, and Angela. I finally found a preacher for uh, our youth, our annual youth day. Uh, I finally found a preacher. He will be Reverend Travis Mitchell, uh, who is an associate pastor at the uh, Marcellus Avenue Church, I believe it is. Uh, but but we'll we'll make some announcements for that. But he will be our preacher for our youth Sunday. And so on the fourth Sunday is our youth Sunday. We're asking parents make sure that your children are here. Uh, make sure that they are here uh, for the practices that are sent out for, for our youth choir, and so that we can make the fourth Sunday a grand occasion. Amen. With all, if our hearts and minds are clear, am I forgetting anything? Amen. Let us stand, and we'll we'll bless the offering along with the benediction. Let us bow. 
Heavenly Father, we thank you for what eyes have seen and our ears have heard on tonight. God, we thank you for uh, this manservant who has proclaimed your word to us on tonight. We ask and pray, O oh God, that as we leave this place, that you would help us men to be the men that you have called us to be, to lead our family not only in uh, in the home home front, but also lead in the spiritual aspects of this, our church. God, we thank you for the men that are here. We thank you for our fathers and the important roles that they play in our lives. And then, Lord, we also say thank you for the mothers uh, because we know that uh, the love and, and the nurture and care uh, is a collective effort on both parts of our parents. And so, God, we ask and pray that as we aim to move from religion to righteousness, that each and every area of our life will be pleasing to you. So, God, help us men to be the men that you have called us to be. Help us to go out and tell a dying world about a risen Savior who yet lives and is able to save from the uttermost to the guttermost. And then, God, we pause and say thank you for the offering that was received on tonight. Thank you for those who gave. Thank you for those who wanted to give but had none to give. And then, God, we ask and pray that it will all be used for the building of your kingdom here on earth. Now may the glory, now may the grace of God, the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us from now until forevermore. And God will be so ever mindful to give your name all the praise and all the honor that it so rightfully deserves. In Jesus' name we pray. And all who love the Lord said amen. Amen. I love y'all. Until Sunday, we'll see. No, I'm sorry. Saturday, leadership meeting. Saturday, leadership meeting. Saturday, leadership meeting. Amen. We thank God and bless God that you have shared with us on today. It is our prayer that something was said, something was done that will cause an unsaved man, woman, boy, or girl to come running asking, what must I do to be saved? Thank you once again for joining our broadcast. And we ask that whenever we're online, tap in and share the Mount Horeb experience with us. Until next time, I'm Pastor Stephan Nash. We'll see you later.